I'm Damon Zell, and this is your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we take a look at all the major happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button, ring that bell, share and like the video, then you can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. All right, we're going to get right into it with the patch notes from September 29th. And the first major thing we see is the event. That's right, there is a Dreadnought uh, event going on within Faction Warfare running till October 28th. It's this way you can actually get your hands on one of the four dreads being available into the game and see exactly how it plays out. Now, I do like how they're doing this event. Basically, they're leading the first event of that uh, finding those intact wrecks in the crumbling wrecks, those wreck uh, event that happened uh, over the last two weeks, merging that into this event. They're basically saying that among those shipwrecks gathered during the wreckage collection event, there's new technology for ships. That's capital ships. Uh, the New Eden's four empires have agreed to let Capsulers test these capital ships in Faction Warfare so they can calibrate and improve their power. Now, if you haven't already done so and haven't uh, gotten your hands on this, this happens after the uh, Faction Warfare time. So it's the two hours directly after the normal two hours of Faction Warfare. And the way this works is there's four waves and four participants in uh, each game. Each one deals with three waves of NPCs, the first being battle cruisers, the second being a mix of battle cruisers and uh, battleships, the third wave being battleships and another NPC dreadnought. And if you survive those three waves, you get to play off or square off against the other players who have survived the same three rounds as you. Now, when you first start off, you're only given your guns in your high slot and you're given a choice right before the match starts of which modules you want. Now, it is completely random and you'll get more mods as the event goes on through each wave. After you kill the first wave, you'll get a choice of another two modules. Uh, after that, you another two modules. If you beat that last third wave, you should be getting a choice of not only modules, but also damage rigs. A lot of people are having fun. It is a little bit difficult, but once you get you, uh, your hands on it, once you get your experience in it, it, it tends to get a little bit easier. Now, if you are an aspiring capital pilot uh, who is thinking about going into dreads, now they haven't released carriers yet. Now, I hope at some point during the event we will get to test out carriers, but I don't know if it's actually going to happen. But if you are an aspiring dread pilot, I suggest that you try out each of these dreadnoughts to see which one is to your liking and which one's going to fit your uh, play style as well as your alliance's doctrine. Now, they are also running in uh, parallel to this the ship data test manual. Now, this is another AUR type, uh, so not so much a login, but it's, it's just like the Concord uh, point one that we run every, I think, 30 to 45 days. Now, this one's going to be running from September 30th to October 21st. And obviously, if you get through all of them and if you pay the AOR, you're going to get both prizes in each tier. But you can still take advantage of this as a free to play player. Prizes gotten from this will be skill points, insurance points, and lots of nano core training uh, materials, as well as the Metal B skin. Now, they have given Faction Warfare a little bit of love and some welcoming quality of life changes, such as uh, you can now queue up as a team, but no more than four pilots per fleet can queue up at uh, a certain time. Just let it be known that if you are queuing up as a fleet of four players, you will be matched against uh, stronger opponents than normal, just regular and random queuing. They've added in a friendly fire lock warning, so uh, if you do lock up your teammates, a pop-up will come up, letting you know that, hey, you know, you're about to fire on one of your teammates. And the best quality of life change, AFK pen penalties. We've all played uh, matches with these, and you've seen my angry rants about this. Pilots who are away from the keyboard during battles will not be able to participate in Faction Warfare match for a period of time. Basically, it's like you're getting that ban for shooting one of your teammates. I believe it's a 20-minute ban. I'm not sure exactly how much of a ban this one is, but if you keep doing it and doing it and doing it, your suspension is going to get longer and longer and longer. So that's great. So you're no longer going to have those pilots just sitting in at the spawn zone and hoping that you're gonna win the match for them, not contributing anything to the game. All right, so let's get into the optimizations for this week. 
we have <clears throat> of course everyone's favorite everyone's known the market value uh, estimated prices based on the successful transactions we know this move on uh, okay a detailed rule is added to the insurance contract screen explaining the mechanics for generating a contract uh, number three, the detailed numbers can be viewed by filtering the amount of stations in star charts. That's a nice quality of life right there. Uh, four, closing the combat log detail screen will no longer close the corporation combat log. I cannot tell you how annoying that is. Scrolling down to find a specific kill. And then when you find that kill, you take a screenshot of it, you close it out, trying to find the next kill. And you got to open the whole menu back up again and start from the top. So... Great quality of life change right there, uh, and it looks like they're on a, a roll of doing that. Also, the maximum number of visits to a marketplace per minute has been increased from 3 to 120. So I'm, I'm really liking this fact that this is probably going to affect those that keep checking those prices and then get to, oh, must wait 10 seconds or 20 seconds for the market to refresh. Well, great quality of life change. This, this whole um, patch has just been some fantastic quality of life changes such as null sec systems can now have up to 1500 players and low sec systems have now been up to 1300 so that's estimating in larger fleet battles uh with the caps coming so that's uh, a great uh, great quality of life thing there especially due to the war that's currently going on which we're going to get into when we talk about the community news an anomaly message display from pirate directionary will only be visible to members of the same corporation good another good one there this way if you're going into ratting say your alliance but you're going into a system owned by another corporation you're not going to be able to take advantage of that uh pirate array to see exactly who spawned it when and whether it's a base anom or a uh system anom number eight after fitting a module fitting another will record the listed location of the last one Number nine, corporation name and ticker name reserved in the corporation pre-assembly event have been released. All players can freely use the previously reserved name. Ten, it is now allowed to trade ships that have been assembled in the corporation hangar with a contract. Eleven, the source of anomaly in the pirate detection area will now only be displayed. Well, we talked about this, but um, this is good because it's going to be displayed right on the overview. You no longer have to pick the system a nom. You know, spin your camera around to see exactly where the anom is in the system to see where it is. It's going to be displayed right there in your overview. All right, number 12. When a gravity trap completes its countdown, it will require the outpost's owner to manual confirmation to generate that Nihilus well instead of doing it automatically. So I guess no more wasted wells uh, for those POS owners who have them. A prompt will pop up every time you log in if you have pending contracts. Another good quality of life change right there. 14. They changed the safe logout feature so that players need to finish the process of entering warp before they can disconnect. 15. They added a combined option considering both ship type and standing in the overview custom fitting. 16. Added the probability page to randomly uh, drop supply chests. Nice, nice. Uh, 17, they added an option for players to open randomly dropped supply chests all at once when they are on the same type and stack. So you no longer have to just open one and then open another. And you can just open batches, which is great for those buying them in batches in Jita or Amar trying to get those specific modules to sell. And last but not least, 18, in order to reduce the stress of the server, the mining mission progress updates every 120 seconds now in the Concord Pass. And of course, whenever they fix some things, you know they break some things, and we have five fixes this week. Uh, the five bug fixes that they broke last time was they fixed an issue where insurance orders with integrated rigs were not compensated normally. Uh, two, fixed an issue where some corporation flags had mismatched elements. Three, they fixed an issue where several non-tradable items were dropped. Number four, they fixed an issue where containers from unanchored citadels weren't displayed in the overview. And last, five, when customizing appearance using nanocores, only skins you have permanent access to can be selected. And those are your patch notes and bug fixes 
for this week. Obviously, we're going to get new patch notes in the next two days. I'm not expecting anything huge coming, at least not until the end of the month when capitals are released, but we're going to see what happens. Now, they have dropped uh, this week's Q&A from the developers, and it does give us some insight into some possible future game mechanics. The first one being, the question was, the speed of battles has greatly increased, the DPS and PvP has increased. Can you now speed up travel between different ends of the galaxy? Make passages between large areas. Is it impossible to wait an hour for a flight? We have to leave the game. Uh, PvP will hardly be affected, but the game will become friendlier and less toxic. The developer answers with, We will consider adding the Yanjun engine to ships of normal tonnage. By using the engine, you can quickly jump between different star systems. This update will be released at the end of this year. Now, what they're talking about is, that is your jump drive. That's your Sino drive. Now, it is curious that they are changing the name to a Yanjun engine. Now, this is just uh, speculation on my part. I have no information directly from the devs. Um, but what they're talking right there is a Sino field. Uh, and uh, they will be also offering uh, jump bridges at the end of the year as well, and that's straight from the developer. Now these will be able to bridge uh, systems placed within Sov. The next question is about PvE. They want to know if there's any plans, uh, missions, storylines uh, that are laid in high sec. Is it possible to have these mission zones in a room that are not scanned out so that is a PvP player can do more without flying in groups for a 15 million mission? There are also people who don't want to join big corporations to do anything at all. So basically this is, and I, I, I love you Care Bears out there, I, I do, um, but this right here cries to me that, you know, we want to run our missions in low sec, but we don't want to get scanned down. We want our reward, but we don't want none of the risk for going into these low security areas. And the developer seems like they're going along with it, because they say they will re readjust all dungeons in the next balanced version. Um, I think this is a terrible mistake. Not, not, I mean, if you're going for risk, if you want that big payout, there has to be some risk involved. And I'm not talking about risk from, you know, 20, 30 NPCs spawning at the same time. There's ways around that. People have been doing it since the launch of the game. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. I'm sorry. If you're going to play in low sec, be planned to be scanned down. Don't AFK these missions. Have your exit strategy in case someone shows up on grid. That's really the, the best thing. And and to me, to not being one to scan down, that's that's just lazy right there. It means you just want to AFK and build ISK. Sorry, that's just my opinion. Okay, the next question is someone asking about battleships. They're saying that the right now, the, uh, the only battleship that can equip a shield field module is the Nightmare. And are there any plans to add these battleships of the Empire factions? And currently, the devs have no plans uh, to equip the existing battleships with the shield field modules, but later they will consider adjusting the power grid of the large shield field module uh, so that battle cruisers can also use them. And the last question of the week, can we get the ability to add a delay message that appears in corp chat when our members log in? Uh, it would be helpful to keep members informed of daily operations and corp needs, or let users know of the Discord server address Stuff like that, which is a great thing. It's the message of the day. A lot of MMOs have it. And yes, they um, they are thinking about doing that. They said they've already been planning on this feature, uh, which allows you to not only do that, but also view the chat history when logging back in as well. But there is no specific time release uh, to be determined right now. And in your Plex market re uh, report this week, Plex has risen back up only slightly to a 1.2 million per Plex going in an upward trend to 1.3 million and like I said previously don't expect to see huge uh, swings in Plex currently uh, I'm estimating only between 1 million and 1.3 maybe 1.4 on the very high side in our main story we are revisiting war and seeing exactly what the scorecard looks like currently now there have been some very big moves over the last week or since the last episode uh, mostly done by Silent, No, and Honk forces. And we have actually seen the Antinosis uh, link come into play more than once. If you look at the scorecard for Structure Warfare, No, Silent, Honk leads 4-1 to one against Pangen 22. Three Citadels taken over via Antinosis 
and One Citadel exploded. Whereas Pantheon, uh, sorry, Pan Gen 22 has also uh, taken out one of Silent's Citadels, I believe, within Fade. Of the three systems that were taken over via Intenosis, each side got one. Silent scored a system via Reki. Um, we have Honk scoring a system, their uh, ancestral home of YRNJ Tech B within Fountain. Now, if you know, they've been hitting Fountain pretty hard over the last few months, specifically that one system. So they finally took it over and is now converted to Honk via Antinosis. And Kofor from No Please Stop has also uh, taken over a system via Antinosis. Now, this initial battle for the system of YRNJ Tag 8 started about three and a half to four hours prior, where uh, no forces were stationed in NOL Tag M9 in Delve to try to disrupt Pantheon's form up for that hull timer. Later on, the same fleet stations in F2DY Tech X within Quarius to try and repel the enemy force of uh, uh, Genesis to join the, the timer as well. Now, within the system, during this particular fight, the, uh, f the forces of Silent, No, and Honk uh, fielded 40 battleships, 31 battlecruisers, 21 cruisers, and 38 uh, frigates, whereas the Gen forces supplied 46 battleships, 45 battlecruisers, 10 cruisers, and 3 frigates. Now that battle did rage on for a few minutes when the fleet itself was repelled. They crashed the gate and exited the system. Unfortunately, I do not have the numbers on ships destroyed at this particular time. Now the battle of YRNJ Tag 8, uh, that the local system spiked high uh, upper 400s, uh, lower 300s. The fight did rage on the grid of the station itself, where no silent honk won the field, took the victory, and converted the station over to a honk. A full link for this fight and the day events of that battle can be found on Stealth.png's channel, a link to which will be in the description below. Now, the next Citadel to be taken over would be that of 3WE Tech KY within Fountain, and this one would be taken over by Kofor from No Please Stop. Now, I am getting reports that a major CTA was called to defend this. However, once the forces showed up of, I believe, 280, uh, the called off. So, the Citadel itself was not defended and taken thusly. Now, as a statement from Pantheon, that this citadel itself was uh, transferred to, was planned to be transferred to another alliance within Pantheon before the war was declared, which was why the hull timer existed at all. I'm told that the it was put into hull by Boop, and we're waiting to get Entenosis by the new uh, owner. The next citadel on the Entenosis tour was that of 9GNS Tac 2 within Delve. And this one was taken over by uh, BOTS, the Beast of the South, part of the Silent Federation. Now, this one did result in a massive fight. Their uh, local was between 500 and 600 for this fight. I'm told that everyone did an outstanding job, all FCs on both sides, and good fights were exchanged at the end. Now, in the end, the forces of Silent, No, and Honk did win the grid and prevail, and did subsequently take over the station via uh, Antinosis, giving it to the Beasts of the South. A recollection, a video of the fight will be in the bottom of the description. This one from OGU, and uh, it's from the Brutix Logistics point of view. And the last system taken was that by Dead, and this was a uh, uh, Corporation Citadel kill of the tune of 9 billion. The uh, corp that owned the Citadel was the Lone Wolf Corporation, or W, uh, sorry, LWC. And this battle, I was told, came late, as Dead was hitting the fort, hitting the Citadel until about 50%, and that's when the defense fleet showed up. A battle in, uh, raged on, and uh, obviously, Dead, no, took the field, and subsequently killing the Citadel. Now, this isn't the only Citadel that they killed over the last week. They did kill another Citadel. This time, this one was one in Geminate, 
in the system of Q-Tech TBHW belonging to Genesis Federation. A statement from Genesis Federation stating that this was an abandoned citadel or that of it was being used by one uh, mining alt. Either way, it is a citadel down uh, and one west soft point. Now to say that Pantheon hadn't strike, struck back uh, would be lying. They did have one Corporation Citadel kill on uh, Silent themselves. This in Fade in the system of K4YZ Tech Y. Uh, the Corporation was Fight for the Red Puppy. Uh, this was a Latin Corporation. I'm told by Silent that the Citadel that got killed was due to a corp dropping the Citadel unannounced in a few uh, in the off hours. I am told that Silent Leadership was very upset by this, and the fight that uh, happened on that grid ranged uh, between local spike of 376 to 409. The Citadel kill itself is worth 8.8 .8 billion. Now there will be a, and also another major battle today in the system of K4 within Aquarius, right outside of Ned, the much contended uh, system. And uh, the whole timer will happen today. I believe it will be a massive fight. I will be on location <laughs> during that fight, so I should have first-hand knowledge of exactly how it goes for next week's episode. As an update to that Battle of K4, which I was a part of, I did delay the video so I could get this bit of information in. The battle itself didn't really take place. There were skirmishes all around the area and even in the system, but the timer itself, there was no presence on the grid, and there is reason for that. According to my intelligence, there were four targets that Shush, No, and Honk were going after that day. Uh, two of which were defended, that was uh, YAW, and I forget the other one, which were timers before the K4 timer popped. But as the K4 uh, timer was happening, there was another timer that uh, also took place. That's right, that would be the system of PF Tech KUQ within Delve. This system was also on the agenda or on the menu for uh, Silent No and Honk's objectives. They were able to take that Citadel as well, uh, through Antinosis, so that gives them yet another soft point converted over uh, to their side. Now, as of the battle itself in K4, which did not happen, local at the height spiked over 1,000 players. We haven't seen uh, this number in a long time, at least for a few months uh, during the wrap-up of the Old War. We actually did hit uh, time dilation times two within the system. Now, before this, uh, the timers, uh, numbers in this system uh, were Pangen 22, 800, and the rest were Silence, No, and um, Honk. Now, 500 of that fleet went to go defend the YAW timer. Uh, they did have a skirmish with a No fleet, which <clears throat> did delete some of the No ships off the, fit, off the field. The entire uh, fleet was not wiped. Uh, but they were uh, taking heavy losses. But at the time of the K4 timer, no big fleet did show up. However, they uh, Silent, No, and Hunk did keep flying in interceptors to just take a shot at the Citadel to keep pausing the, the timer. So that 15 minute timer actually, I believe, took about 30 minutes. But as of the wee uh, hours of this morning, uh, that would be uh, October 5th. The uh, Citadel in 49 Tech U6U within Aquarius has also fallen uh, within this war to Silent No and Honk forces. So that brings the final tally up 6 to 1 on Citadel takeovers and kills. As a re-record edit to this video, uh, some news came out while I was editing, so I had to put this in there. Uh, Silent No Honk did actually uh, kill yet another corporation outpost, uh, South Point, this time in the system of IR Tech WT1 inside Fountain. This outpost, or sorry, this uh, corporation citadel was for $8.8 .8 billion. Now, that doesn't just stop the news there. Pantheon has also reflipped 
the system of YRNJ Tech 8 back from Honk. I honestly can see a tug of war going to be happening over the system in the days and weeks to come. Now, last episode, we did speak of a corporation that had left the Silent Federation uh, that were Sav bearing corporations. That was MAG, M-A-G. And I was, con and I was uh, contacted by MAG leadership to explain exactly why they left the Federation. Ozine uh, first goes on to say that he is the founder and the first and last CEO of the Old School Alliance within the Pure Blind region. He states that they tried to merge with the BNI Alliance to create a strong bloc within the Silent Federation, and the new alliance was uh, going to be called BOSS. He goes on to state that uh, this didn't happen. Both alliances were destroyed in the game due to spies and traitors, and Silent took all uh, that was left over. He states that the MAG Corporation was the last stand, and uh, that they would never join Silent because they betrayed them and manipulated them. I asked if the if Mag dissolved uh, or are they finding a new alliance. Uh, Ozen says that many pilots left the corporation. Uh, only a few remained as a resistance movement, and that he now has contacts with the great alliances involved in the war, and direct lines with their leaders for extended plans. He goes on to state that uh, one thing is sure: that the resistance will spread and silent will disintegrate from within that they will work on this with their partners in the south and west of the New Eden uh, universe. And then he makes an accusation about how the XO team, the command team in Silent Work, with a quote from Angel Blackman stating that in the executive, he's not there to manage, he's there to make sure daggers get stuck in the right backs. Ozen takes this as the dagger getting stuck in the old school lines and himself as being the CEO and of course the MAG Corporation. As his official statement, he says, As the founder of the Old School Alliance, I am the first and last CEO. I want to inform all the Eagles that the MAG Corporation will continue to act as a resistance movement within the territory of the Silent Federation. Our primary targets will be the Silent Alliance pilots. All of you who are tired of the Silent hegemony, I don't know, sorry, uh, are welcome to join us. When force becomes law, resistance is our duty. Now, Angel Blackman did contact me as a counterpoint for this story, and he does give us an official statement. He says, Old school pilots have gone through strife and stress due to the actions of one of its founding executors. Through misguided delusions of grandeur, or through a calculated plan to uh, usurp two alliances and undermine the silent, what should have been a time of celebration after the win over Fireflies turned into a time of confusion and regrets. I am sorry I was not able to save the Alliance, but I am at least relieved that all the corporations are once again united under the silent banner, are proposing and are result uh, in their trust for each other. I am also glad a lot of our MAG brothers have seen through the smoke and have joined various silent corporations as individual pilots. To the mutineers, I say this, if you truly believed you were trying to help the eagle soar high, but lost your way in, we forgive you. But if you want to come back to the north and attack your brothers, we shall strike you down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger, the north remembers. Now, as far as the silent uh, side, leadership tells me in an anonymous statement that what it really boils down to is that old school manipulated some folks in BNI in an attempt to force a merger and make a play for power within the Federation. The red flag started when they turned down the best allocations in Tinal and told the Federation that uh, they didn't have the right to dictate which space they were allocated. As things progressed, one of the members in that group decided to steal accounts of a Federation executive. Uh, at the end of the day, such instability is bad for the Federation and BNI CEOs were tired of it. So after giving MAG the ability to retain their SOV and join Alexander's alliance, uh, Silent found out that they were harboring blacklisted members who were using their system to make money and blue scout, uh, resulting in a Federation ban. Also at the end of the day, they were a small corp and the trouble they brought wasn't worth it. So they were removed. Basically some folks with more ambition than sense 
tried to make a play for power and were shut down. Honestly, it's a shame. Uh, to they are good PvPers, and Chris is a good dude. But the moment they decided to allow and encourage someone to steal another's account, it went way past the game. Now that is a direct from a source within uh, within uh, Silent Federation, who does want to remain anonymous, also uh, does not want me using the screenshot of the conversation that we had. So, it is what it is. As we turn to Catch-23, we see some of the internal problems still happening within the Honey Badger Alliance. So far, three of the largest and longest corporations have decided to leave Honey Badgers due to the current leadership. Plus 30, founding and longtime executor corp has decided to leave and join a new alliance outside of the uh, Catch-22 coalition. Knee, Knee Deep in Space, which is a combination of Knee and KP, that's uh, Kind Panic, uh, which joined Honey Badgers on uh, September 29th of last year, only 20 days after the creation of the Honey Badger Alliance, have decided to leave. Uh, I am unsure where their destination lies, as you will see with a statement from Knee themselves. But the third corporation to leave is Kind. Uh, Wholesome have decided to leave Honey Badgers and join a different alliance under the Catch-22 banner. Kind joined Honey Badgers uh, in October 21st of 2020 last year. My internal sources say that this came after Honey Badgers caught Luar, the CEO of Hispania, granting himself roles in Discord to spy on other corporations' uh, leadership and corporation chats. Uh, the leadership did not feel that this was spying because they are friendly and no action was taken. Now, I did reach out to Bloomingdale, uh, one of the leaders of Ni, nee, to ask me a few questions about exactly why they are leaving the Hunter Badgers Alliance. And the first question I asked was, uh, what led to the decision to leave Honey Badgers Alliance? He states that the decision to leave Honey Badgers haven't been an easy one, and that's for sure. Uh, Knee Deep in Space used to be part of uh, Eternal Armada before and they joined Honey Badgers to stay in the area and further strengthen their base as an industrial corporation, uh, which they did uh, as they are holding four solved systems at the moment. But with a certain player base and rising tech levels, as well as the addition of uh, station modules, the space to use gets scarce and cramped. With our location between three factions, Pantheon, Genesis, and Catch-22, there is little to no place for meaningful expansion as an industrialist. So our main motivation is expansion on a long-term game-wise. On the other hand, we are not too happy about the development that Honey Badgers is taking lately. Also, we notice changes uh, bring a player activity spike, and nearly one year in Quirious, a change is needed, and our pilots are eager for that change. Now, I do go on to ask, you know, what is next for Neve? Where's their destination? And he says, that's the big question everyone is asking. I am happy to have my contacts in Eve, which I still keep in touch with after all the time, and they all are mocking me of what we are up to. But as hard as it is, I will better not communicate things too early, as we have and had a few offers on the table. Some have been blatant insult from merging into small corporations to offering a single negative .1 solve system, while other have been honorable and serious partners in the talks. But one thing I can share for sure, we recently moved to HiSec and are ready for the next step, which will start soon. I did press a little bit and ask if there were any other corporations frustrated with Honey Badger leadership and are close to exiting, uh, exiting as well. And he says that Ni nee has a strong rule regarding intrigue and politics, and that is why we build things and those things don't talk. So do we. We get respected for that, and we plan to hold this standard in the future as well. Unfortunately, there is other bad news with Catch-22 and their ongoing war between SCG for the Teneforilis region. Now, with speaking with a SCG member uh, of leadership, a spokesman, uh, we also discussed here on the channel the non-invasion pact that Genesis signed with SEG about two weeks ago. Now, SEG on their side believed that it was per the entire Pan-Gen 22 coalition. So naturally, when they saw Catch-22 dropping a Citadel with 2PG Tech KN, they saw this as a violation of that non-invasion pact. 
Catch-22's reason behind this uh, claim of that solve was that it was being underutilized and not used by SCG, and so they took it. In fact, within their uh, diplomatic talks on, uh, within SCG, they actually were laughing and taunting SCG to come and take the system back. Now, OG noticed the soft point in Teneferellis placed by Catch-22 in their allied uh, friend's space and reached out to SCG leadership to ask exactly what was going on. Now, prior to this, SCG had put both the shield and armor timers in and was returning for the hull timer, found that it was not only Catch-22 defending, but also Genesis and Pantheon. SCG explained to OG leadership that they have did not have the might to take on the entire coalition of Pangen 22 to retake their space. So OG leadership teamed up and joined this side war against Catch-22 to reclaim the Teneferellis region for SCG. Taking advantage of the war currently raging in the west between Pangen 22 and Shush No Honk, OG has taken four uh, outposts down as well as one Sov Citadel away from Catch-22 in the Teneferellis region. They do want it known that they are not entering into the war proper, but they will help out their allies defend their home. A OG spokesman also states that they had pushed several more timers within Catch-22 space. The Eve Echoes community mourns the passing of Draco68, otherwise real life, uh, real life name Robert Banfill. He was a member of the DCM Dissidium uh, Corp. He is remembered as a friend pilot, hauler, and army veteran ranger. There was a remembrance procession laid out on the 2nd of October at 1200 UTC. Members of all alliances throughout New Eden did come to partake in this procession, as well as a ceasefire called for the hour of that pro uh, procession as well. Now you will see some stories on Reddit about how this event was used. But we're not going to get into that on this channel. Um, we are just going to remember Draco68 as the pilot and Eveco's community member that he was. Also, some might have seen over the last couple of days that the Catskull Cartel, that's Captain Benji's corporation, has left Void and is showing in-game as uh, not within an alliance. I did reach out to Benji about this, and he just... Uh, told me that it is a restructuring going on. They are very much still a part of Void. They are just uh, consolidating into one alliance. Also, I would like to give a player shout out to Evil Darkness, who has returned to the game. So be sure to be on the lookout for exploding Balgorns who are uninsured, as well as disintegrations of alliances from within. Great to have you back, Ed. This week's Corp Alliance Spotlight goes out to Dead Space. Also, if you are interested in getting you, your corporation or lines into a weekly spotlight, please just DM me on Discord and we can talk about the details. It's your boy Dead Space, from the very first corp spotlight to now. From the first personal outpost kill to the first corporation citadel kill, from gate camps to leading the charge into fountain, delve, and Quirius, the dead persevere. The exploits of dead have made us one of the most infamous fighting forces in New Eden, standing defiant against the largest entities while dropping meme after video after podcast, leading the way into content creation both in and out of the game. October marks the second anniversary for the dead community, making us one of, if not the oldest community in Echoes. Join us as we celebrate with a constant torrent of activity and shenanigans or feel free to hang out in our public chat and get to know your local undead. The Discord link to Dead Space will be in the description below. Join us or not, either way, you're already dead. Alright, before we move into the big kills of the week, we have the new feature, What The Fit. And this week on What The Fit, we have a Raven with only one high slot being used, while also using plates for defense as well as shield hardeners. Now, this could honestly be someone who just, you know, took whatever they had in the hangar and slapped it on their ship, but who knows? Um, it does beg the question, however, what the fit? 
All right, we open up big kills this week with DT13, who did get lost in the shuffle from last episode. I forgot to put him on there, so I am uh, featuring him this week. They did give us a 6 billion rattlesnake, as well as a 8.4 billion orifice. Now, No Please Stop comes in with a 7.6 billion stratios, as well as a 10.9 billion vindicator. Now, remember, the kills from Silent, No, Honk, uh, Pantheon, Genesis, Catch-22, these are aside from the uh, battles uh, going on in that war itself. These are just other kills happening at random. Pantheon fills their faction battleship bingo card with a 4.7 billion vindicator, a 5, sorry, 4.5 billion Balgorn, a 3.8 billion Macario, a 4.4 billion Rattlesnake, and a 4.9 billion Nightmare. Genesis scores two Macario kills, one at 3.6 billion, the other at 4.5, as well as a Cyclone 2 command ship at 3.3 billion. Silent scores with a huge Succubus at 7.8 billion, as well as a 5.2 billion Vindicator. Six Seal Alliance comes in this week with two Macario kills, one at 4.5 billion, the other at 4.6 billion. Uh, also from Six Seal, but specifically from Mug, a 5.4 billion Vindicator, as well as a 6.1 billion Stratios kill. Cast 22 scores a 9.2 billion Balgorn kill, and Nomadic Nightmares gives us a 5.9 billion Stratios kill. Kana also gives us a 4.6 billion Macario kill. I'm sorry, I just don't know which alliance Kana is with. And again, when you guys are submitting these big kills to me, please, when you give me the kill, even if I know you, even if we have an exchange, uh, just always put down which alliance you are with so I can put you in the correct categories. And this week on everyone's favorite contest, the Solo Kills of the Week, and your chance to win a uh, Omega Duo Combo, we start us off with Captain Sharky with a 1.3 billion Garmer kill. Papa Papatine gives us a 1.4 billion Gnosis kill. Noxmaster with a 1.5 billion Executor Interceptor kill. Arglarks with a 1.6 billion Garmer kill. Dantora with a 1.7 billion Sinesis kill. Missy Kinky with a 1.8 billion Astero kill. Dan9411 gives us a 2.2 billion Prophecy Command 2 kill. Razik47 with a 2.511 billion Terra kill. Mistrix Meow with a 2.577 billion Estero kill. This week's winner and the new owner of a Duo Omega combo kill is Final Fantasy with a 2.8 billion Estero kill. Congratulations on your victory. Please hit me up on Discord to discuss how to receive your prize. Now, if you need more news in your life, I suggest you go on over to check out Sky News, Russia's premier news outlet. Uh, don't worry, the videos are also in English subtitles. They have a great production team over there, and they usually feature stories that we don't hear. As well as checking out the ever-popular Rambo's uh, podcast, The Echoes of New Eden, where he has roundtable discussions every week, as well as a interview with a prominent figure within the community. And that's our show. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember, uh, fly safe. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And remember, we're always one vision, one purpose, one front.